Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and ISRO, uh, the Indian Space Research Organization, has just performed a test of a crew capsule. It's an abort test. What they're really doing is testing the abort system. They launched it from the ground. You can see that it had uh, engines on the side and engines on this uh, nose, this escape tower at the front. Now, it's kind of interesting that they did this because there isn't any official money for a crewed space program yet. But then I get the impression that the Indian scientists have been doing amazing work with real relatively small budgets. So yeah, we have an onboard camera, but it seems to be running at a very low frame rate. So these are the drogue shoots that were initially deployed to stabilize the spacecraft, stabilize the capsule as it descends. Then uh, these put, drop away and the main parachutes come out. These are, of course, the ones that the capsule is supposed to land under. You notice the way they deploy slowly. They have this uh, restricting ring that drops down so the parachutes deploy slowly and they don't jerk the crew around too much. Now, the Indian press has been all over this, uh, talking about what a great success it is. I'm not 100% uh, you know, convinced that it was a 100% success. Certainly, they have demonstrated that they can move a capsule off of the launch pad very, very quickly. They use grid fins for stabilization. But the landing part didn't seem to work too well. What happened there, you'll notice, is the capsule dropped like about a second or so before it was supposed to hit. That would not be a particularly soft landing. Of course, parachutes are supposed to detach after landing so they don't drag the capsule around. But I think these ones detached a little early and, you know, they've got a bit of work to do. As I said, as of right now, there is no official funding for a crewed space program. But it would be amazing if India could join that very exclusive club of nations that is able to launch their own uh, crews into space. Now, despite not having a budget for a crewed space crew program, they do have a launch vehicle which is capable of performing what they, you know, the operations they need. This is the GSLV, the Geostationary Launch Vehicle Mark III. This is obviously an evolution of the Mark I and the Mark II. So, uh, yeah, it looks a lot like a Titan III in that the first stage is powered by these large, powerful solid rocket boosters. Uh, further into flight, the core stage is used, and this is a hypergolic fueled stage using UDMH and dinitrogen tetroxide. Finally, the third stage is hydrogen and liquid oxygen. And uh, you know, the first version of the GSLV was the Mark I. It used a Russian upper stage. The Mark II used a you know indigenously developed version. But uh, the Mark III has rebuilt pretty much everything and has doubled the payload. In theory, the Mark III can put something like 10 tons into low Earth orbit. The Mark III is still very much in development, but it's interesting that one of the first launches of it was used to test the re-entry properties of their crew capsule. Here's a photo of it being recovered after that test. But internationally, India has been making lots of waves in the small sat market. They have been launching more CubeSats on single vehicles than anybody else. This is the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. And yeah, I think they have the record for the most satellites on a single launch vehicle. Back in February 2017, they put over 100 CubeSats on a single PSLV. And it's notable that almost all of those actually came from US companies. There were a lot of Doves and Lemur satellites. So even although SpaceX appear to be eating everyone else's lunch when it comes to commercial space launches, India is definitely giving SpaceX a run for its money when it comes to CubeSat services. And of course, beyond these commercial successes, India has also uh, got a spacecraft around Mars right there. Their Mars Orbiter mission has been in orbit for uh, well, almost two years now. It's certainly not up to the same level of uh, the NASA missions, but it is quite capable and it shows that you don't need billions of dollars to explore other planets now. But coming back to that original test, Obviously, that was not a test on a booster flying you know, to simulate an in-flight abort. That would be the next step, but presumably at some point, getting money to have an actual human-qualified space program would be the proper next step. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.